Uh, guys, did you see uh, my video? I think it was the last one where I showed the where that girl, um, her YouTube channel name is uh, Waiting for Jesus Christ, I believe. She saw two moons, and I think, if I remember correctly, uh, in one of her videos, she said she always had been having dreams, I think, uh, from the Lord, she said, saying when she sees two moons in the sky, that Jesus is getting ready to come back to rapture his people. And she saw two moons in the sky. As, uh, you can see it on that last video I did. Uh, I got her video on there as part of my video. I think it's the last one or the one before that one. I think it's the last one before this one. And uh, she actually videotaped two moons in the sky. That was, some, that was something. It made my hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. And uh, it, it was really something. And she'd been told, the way I understand it, she'd been told by the Lord, she said, in her dreams, if she sees two moons, she's getting ready to come back for the rapture at that time. And then I heard bells in my ear about four or five nights ago. Like uh, Somebody said, a commenter wrote and said, wedding bells. That's awesome. I didn't think of that. It was like ding, 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 ding. You know, like that. Just uh, about four or five different times I heard it. And... Uh, and also, this says, I found this, I looked up on what, what hearing bells means in Christianity, and this says, come into the ark. Noah heard the bells of heaven ringing with, bring your family into the ark. I'm about to close the door. And God said unto Noah, and God said unto Noah, the end of my flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And make thee an ark of gopher wood, and behold, I, I even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything uh, that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Genesis 6 13, 14, 17, 18. Um, so I thought that was really something, too. And uh, so war is getting ready to start. And World War III is coming, guys. Uh, Trump, you know, done some things. He angered the Muslims and Arabs to spark off uh, war. He, uh, he he angered the Arabs and Muslims by, uh, uh, he recognized Jerusalem, member of Jerusalem and Israel as the Israeli capital. Then they moved to, he moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. That pissed the Arabs off. And uh, then, uh, Trump pulled Israel out of the disastrous, well, they called it a disastrous Iran treaty, I reckon, and reimposed sanctions. And uh, then uh, Trump recognized Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And now he's saying it is uh, the Golan Heights is the property of Israel, and that's making the Arabs and uh, Muslims really angry. And uh, that's going to give uh, them really... Uh, you know, reason to uh, attack, like uh, this may spark up what sets off the Isaiah 17 prophecy. Uh, Syria is actually saying now that they're going to attack Israel to take back the Golan Heights, and when they do that, Israel will prob probably nuke, uh, nuke Damascus, Syria, which will fulfill the prophecy of, uh, of uh, Isaiah 17, I guess, and the way I understand it. And uh, also, when they do that, then this would give Russia, Turkey, and Iran, and all those other countries the last excuse they need to invade Israel after Israel take, attacks Syria. Um, you know, Russia and Iran, they love uh, Syria, and uh, Turkey, also support, Turkey also supports Syria. So um, God is using Trump to fulfill end-time prophecy. Uh, so things are he coming to a head, guys, and this could start World War III, too. And then, you know, that could be when the U.S. gets nuked also. But I was wanting you to also see these things. All these things are going on. Jesus is coming back any moment, guys. If you're not right with the Lord, Jesus, please get saved. Ask Jesus to save you first, repenting your sins, team. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and ask him to save you. And ask, ask Jesus to be your Lord and your God. Make, make him your Lord and your God of your life. Make Jesus your God and your Lord, your master, your Lord, and your Savior. And uh, realize what he done for you on the cross. He gave his life for you to save you. He's standing out with open arms waiting for you to come to him. You've got to come to him, though, and you've got to ask him to save you. And ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit once you get saved. And seek him with all your heart and soul. Do it quickly, guys.
the door is shutting, but there's still a crack left. You can get in there. Uh, either he's going to come as a, as your judge and to pour judgment on you, or he's going to come to rescue you. Which one do you want to be? I mean, I want to be rescued by my Lord. And you'll be given a glorified body and taken to heaven and, and be in total paradise in the kingdom of heaven. Or you'll face the judgments of the Lord with uh, seven years pure hell on earth and during the great tribulation. And if you get killed during that time, other than giving your life for Jesus, you could end up in hell unless, unless, you're, uh, unless you're refusing the mark of the beast and refusing to worship the beast in his image and tell him you love Jesus and let him cut your head off. Then, then you'll wake up in paradise. That about be about probably the only way to end up uh, going going to heaven if you uh, or find yourself left behind is to get your head cut off or get or let them kill you while you you know while you tell them you love Jesus and refuse the mark of the beast. Uh, you probably have to be a martyr for the Lord the way I understand it. Uh, if you're left behind and don't go in the rapture, so try to get right with the Lord now so you can go in the rapture. Because, but if you do have to give your life for the Lord, if you do find yourself left behind. You probably won't even feel it. The Lord probably won't even let you feel it. You'll probably, uh, and you'll wake up in his arms in paradise if you give your life for the Lord and don't take the mark of the beast and refuse to worship, and if you refuse to worship the beast in his image, and then if you keep praising Jesus while they cut your head off, you'll wake up in paradise. Probably won't even, the Lord probably won't even let you feel it. But please get right with Jesus now, guys, so you won't have to go through all that. And let him rescue you and give you a glorified body and have no more pain or suffering and no more death, no more sorrow and being and let him wipe the tears off your cheeks and uh, in heaven and be in heaven with the Lord and praising the Lord and feeling the love of Jesus being with him. It's either that or hell and uh, eternal separation from God and fire burning the lake of fire forever and never no rest and no, never nothing to eat, never nothing to drink, never a drop of water. Wishing you just had a drop of water. And hell, that'd be horrible, guys. You don't want that. I want to show you what I was been going on here. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, okay, yeah, let me show you this. We're in the end days, guys. The very end days. very last seconds actually before Jesus comes back we're out of time guys we're out of time you have to do it now you have to come to Jesus and seek him now everybody repent everybody I don't care if you're saved or ain't saved everybody needs to be repenting right now of sins just about out of time guys houses 
were totally obliterated. I think 95% of the houses were obliterated. Any tree had four, five, six, seven people in it. But these poor people were in a, a terrible, terrible position, terrible state. The flooded area is well over 200 square kilometers. And of course, communities live near the rivers. So I just expect, and I'm guessing, but it's well into the thousands of four, five, six thousand, unlike what the president's saying. We're going to turn now to that massive tropical cyclone causing a humanitarian crisis in southern Africa. Take a look at the devastation there in Mozambique. The number of those killed could rise past 1,000. ABC's Eden Panel has the very latest. This morning, the desperate search for the stranded and missing. Homes smashed and washed away as desperate residents try to pick up the pieces. Now, relentless rain creating floodwaters almost 20 foot high in parts. Some have only trees and rooftops for survival. At least 200 confirmed dead, but the president here fears there could be over a thousand killed by this category four storm. In the small mountain town of Chamani Mani in Zimbabwe, one woman's harrowing story of survival. Enya says, my house caved in and I was stuck under a pile of rocks. My husband, who was sleeping next to me, was crushed to death. And in Malawi, mothers and their children line up in large crowds just to get health care. Watch this rescuer swim to two women stuck on a pile of brush where they only have a few bowls and the clothes on their backs. It's been a week since Cyclone Idai made landfall with winds over 100 miles an hour. Bridges and roads washed away. A major dam burst as nearly 100,000 people wait to be saved. From above, entire neighborhoods wiped out. Now the help is only just starting to arrive as tractors try to remove trees and debris. So the needs here are immense. People need food, fuel, shelter, and of course, medicine. As a hunt for survivors goes on, there are real fears of waterborne diseases such as cholera. In the meantime, the US has dispatched an elite emergency management team to assess what America can do to help. The historic Midwest floods are getting worse a week after that disaster started to unfold. A new levee breach yesterday on the Missouri River forced the evacuation of the entire town of Craig, Missouri in just hours. Officials now estimate the cost of the flooding in four states to be in the billions of dollars. In Iowa, the governor said she is going to ask President Trump to quickly announce a disaster declaration to help with recovery efforts. Don Daler is in flooded Hamburg, Iowa, which is several miles from the Missouri River. Don, what's it look like this morning? Yeah, good morning. Well, as you can see, it's wet. This is actually Main Street. The water gets a lot deeper the further you go in that direction. But of course, it's never a good idea to go wandering around flooded streets. And I have to tell you, it is really eerie seeing those street lights stretch all the way into the distance. As we take an overhead look, I'll tell you this much of this is from the Missouri River, which came rushing in here when suddenly hundreds of miles of levees were breached. And within a matter of minutes, Hamburg became a town submerged. In Hamburg, Iowa, nothing was spared. The homes and businesses of the nearly 1,200 people who live here were totally submerged. There's no place for the water to go. We had Major General Scott Spellman and his team from the Army Corps of Engineers assessed the devastation from above. You signed up to protect people, to help people. So how does this affect you personally to see uh, this town underwater? You're dealing with uh, people and communities that are having uh, really the worst day of their lives. And we understand the frustration. We want to do everything we can within our authorities as fast as we can to help them. As we rode through Main Street, it was only passable by boat. Hamburg built a secondary levee before a major flood in 2011. It kept this area dry. Problem is, the Army Corps of Engineers asked them to lower it to five feet high to meet federal regulations. And this flood was nine feet. It just rolled in. This Kathy Crane has been the town's mayor for 12 years. This, this is a tough community. They're, we're little and God's we're poorest not judgments out healthy. on this earth and on this country. How are you going to rebound from this? God's well, angry from all the stench of sin that come up to his nostrils in heaven. God's homes. angry with all the we sin. We keep our citizens. There Get are right people. with Jesus. Get right with God, They're, Yahweh. We've known him all our lives. Jesus is coming, guys. We have noticed the water has been slowly receding. I, mean, I wouldn't so. be able to be standing here two days ago, but the residents are really concerned that with those levees basically destroyed, the town might be susceptible to even more flooding 
in the coming months. Nearly six months after Hurricane Michael slammed into the Florida panhandle, many people living there are still trying to put their lives back together. The Category 4 storm made landfall last October, killing 43 people. It caused more than $6 billion of damage. Manuel Bajorquez is in Panama City, Florida, with a look at the painstaking recovery effort. Manuel, good morning. Good morning. Just take a look around, and you can see parts of the panhandle look like the hurricane hit just yesterday. Some have not been able to start the cleanup. Others have simply left. And with an estimated 40,000 homes either damaged or destroyed, the most critical need here is housing. This is our sauteed onions. Shelly Summers isn't just cooking for her family. <laughs> Good stuff, my boy. She feeds 17 men, women, and children who live here, a tent city in her backyard for those who have nowhere else to go. What did you feel when you saw that there were people that did not? God, God bless this woman. She's a good woman. She's, she's a setting a good example of what Christians should do to help their fellow neighbors in times of need. And she's being a, she's setting a good example as a Christian, as a believer in Jesus. Not have even a place to set up a tent. They lost their homes and they needed a sense of security and a sense of belonging. That was the biggest thing for me. I mean, she opened up her home to total, total strangers. The hurricane left Lori Hogan and her husband Gino homeless. They were staying in a hotel for a little while, but when the money finally ran out, they found a new shelter in Summer's backyard. Those are tears of yeah. gratitude. It's tears of gratitude, happy. We don't know where we'd be if, if, it, wasn't for if it wasn't for them. 20 miles away at Springfield Community Church, hundreds of families still show up for food boxes. Grateful, but many are frustrated by the pace of recovery. Pretty much sickening. You know, it's, it's just sickening. How they're putting things first before they put people first. Pastor Eddie Pitts, who is displaced himself, organized these volunteers, who serve some 12 to 1,400 people every week. There's still a need here, and in their eyes, you talk to them, in their eyes, they have been forgotten. And they will tell you that. Government assistance uh, has uh, arrived. I'm stop right there. Guys, this is a, we're even in the time of the great deception and the great apostasy, the great the falling away from the truth of God's true words because the Bibles are being changed supernaturally. I'm going to make another video on that real soon. Uh, they're doing it with either the Large Hadron Collider that CERN has our, it's fallen angel technology, or the quantum computers, D-Wave computers. And uh, I'll show you the verses in the next video. So a lot of verses that show, say this was going to happen. Our Bibles will be changed in the last days. Uh, if you have the Holy Spirit, that leads you, it'll lead you to all truth and gives you eyes to see and ears to hear. You'll see the changes so easily. I see them easy, so, so easily. And I praise Jesus. He gave me eyes to see and ears to hear the Bible changes, which is part of the great deception, a huge part of it. Watch my videos on the Bible changes. Go back through my videos. Watch them on the Bible changes. It's called the Mandela Effect Bible Changes. Or the great deception uh, it's the great apostasy anything like that you see in my videos watch those videos watch EYA videos she's good at showing you the Bible changes EYA extol Yeshua always just type in EYA on YouTube but her YouTube channel name she's good watch her videos on the Bible changes if you don't believe it you'll if you have the Holy Spirit you should see the changes to the Bible I found this uh, these people sing uh, the, an ancient Hebrew Psalm 104 they're singing and it'll show you down at the bottom what they're singing the Psalm 104 verses as they sing it I thought it was neat I'll play this to end the video with uh, sung an ancient Hebrew Psalm 104 from the Bible from the Bible hope you enjoy this video guys get ready get right with the Lord guys everybody be repenting of Jesus of your sins and ask him to forgive you of your sins. Every time we sin, we need to repent to Jesus of our sins.
she can't look at that and see all that destruction and know we're in the last days. I don't know what to tell you. What's that verse Jesus told us? Said you can discern, you hypocrites, you can discern the weather, but you can't discern the signs of the times. Well, you, anybody should be able to discern that we're in the last days. Bible changes and all the stuff going on. All the disasters all around the United States and around the world. There's much worse coming, guys, much worse. But if you're right with Jesus, we got the rapture to look forward to. So get right with Jesus, please. Love you. I will see you on the next video.